So I know what you did. Congratulations, I think you think you're cute. The threshold was crossed. I was a poor woman. Is that what it is? Am I a refugee? I'm perfectly capable, but I don't have the money to pay the court filing fees. And they'd already said that their risk liability was exactly the debt. And the problem is, is that it wasn't a debt, it was a capital outlay. And I just caught them engaged in securities fraud that is so egregious that it actually constitutes treason. Because what you want me to do is to perform as if I am representing the head of state of another country that had a nationalized industry engaged in financial arrangements with the private sector of the United States because we don't have a nationalized oil industry. At least we didn't until members of the gas and oil sector decided to launch a biological attack on their own people so that the federal government would be responsible for paying for their debt. Did we cross the threshold yet? See, I wasn't poor at the time either. Right? Riga, huh? How many cryptos you got running on me right now? No, 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 no. Don't throw your wife up there as a human shield. If she was the first lady, she would have behooved herself as the first lady. How many I got? One? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're lucky, because if I open one more, I'll be out of compliance, right? So, what do we go with first? Why don't we get to the point? Document number 65. Signed by Peter Riga, commission expires March 28, 2018, but he signed it on August 8th of 2017. $300 for medical debt, $2,000 educational debt. Submitted before 1 o'clock p.m. Statement of inability to afford payment of court cost or an appeal bond. The ironic thing about this is it was submitted in both English and Spanish. There's a Spanish version and an English version. Mr. Rica notarized both. But the court only acknowledged one, the one in English. And it is document number 065. What's next? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm taking my time. Form 6K. Report of foreign private issuer. The Netherlands. The following is the text of an announcement released to the London Stock Exchange by Royal Dutch Shell on September 18th, 2017. What's next? This one, what's this say? Date on which the threshold was crossed or reached. August 8, 2017. Date on which the issuer was notified. September 8, 2017. Took a whole month to inform you about reaching that threshold. You just wanna make sure she could uh, live. Or you just want to make sure that Black Rock and Blackstone were distinguished. I get them mixed up all the time. 
You know, the ironic thing is, at the time, presumably, this was signed, BlackRock was not contracted with the Federal Reserve to take on toxic corporate debt and junk bond it so that people in this country could be forced into uncompensated, unwilling, and undisclosed services connected to laundering other people's assets for what? Repurposing purposing as a uh, Polish? You got something mixed up, guys? See, I saw that stuff about the Chechen feed that's supposed to be financing what's going on tonight. Is this too literal? And that's what we got to work with, right? What's next? September 6, 2017. To the Supreme Court of Texas. On August 3, 2017, the Supreme Court of Texas accepted for filing a petition for a quo warranto. The court has not officially responded within 30 days of filing or 20 days of being referred to the court for review. As of September 5, 2017, the court had not responded to disaffirm my claim, so to repudiate my announcement as the interim attorney general of the state of Texas. The petition additionally declared that the people of the state of Texas were in imminent danger due to seditious activities performed by members of the Texas Governor's Office, the Texas Attorney General's Office, and members of the Texas Legislature. In the ensuing 30 days, events have transpired to support the petition's claims and reveal the extent of the sedition that the petition attempted to suppress. The events confirm violations of Section 432.1393 and Section 432.165 of the Texas Code of Military Justice, as well as other violations of this and other codes of law. If these events occurred in the course of a declaration of a state of emergency due to a natural disaster response, make the ethical application of the Texas Code of Military Justice all the more important. Petition also requested that the process begin for identifying appropriate candidates for the assumption of the duties of the Adjutant General per Section 437.002 of the Texas Code of Military Justice and to have the names of those candidates turned over for consideration. No list, however, has been provided. Meanwhile, as the Interim Attorney General, I have continued to accumulate evidence of the extent of the sedition about which I wrote and an assessment of its implications. I maintain that the people of the state of Texas are still in danger, and additionally, the failure of members of the government of the state of Texas to adequately respond has potentially endangered individuals in other sovereign states and perhaps other sovereign nations. Under the Texas Military Code of Justice, the Adjutant General, upon declaration, is required to complete 30 days of training before officially assuming office. While it is obvious that the assigning of the roles of both Adjutant General and Attorney General to the same person is a serious conflict of interest and liability to the best interest of the people of the state of Texas, it is imperative that a new form of government emerge that takes into consideration the material conditions while also working to establish from its inception an ethical and honest attempt to salvage what is true and genuine of the spirit of the people of the state of Texas as enshrined in law and by our commitment to respecting the sovereignty of the peoples of other states, the spirit of the United States of America. It is also worth recalling and holding from the inception that the history of Texas involved volunteers from other states who came to assist Texas with its struggle for independence. As one of the first associate justices of the state of Texas remarked, quote, when this legislation is taken in connection with the fact that nearly all of those who had so fallen were volunteers and not citizens of the Republic of Texas, and that their heirs were in the country from whence they had come to participate in our struggle for independence, it leaves the inference that foreign heirs were not intended to be excluded, where the ancestor had fallen on the occasions mentioned in the acts of legislation we had noticed. Abner S. Lipscomb, 1846-1856, as Associate Justice. It is our duty, end quote, it is our duty not only to recognize the people who were not born in the state of Texas who are impacted and who have taken and will take the necessary steps to defeat the sedition, but also to not prejudice the fact that individuals were born citizens of the state of Texas so as to preclude their accountability for acts of sedition or complicity with the sedition at hand. As of today, I declare that upon finishing a 30-day period without any legitimate redress for the grievances which compelled me to petition the court, without any assistance in an attempted sedition against the people of the state of Texas and the sovereignty of the people of other states and nations, 
And in the face of a continuing and mounting imminent danger to the people of the state of Texas, I accept the duties of the Office of Attorney General and will move forward on efforts to address the sedition and related acts that assist with its accomplishment. I request that I be provided with assistance per the terms of Section 437.114 of the Texas Military Code of Justice. I will be filing charges on behalf of the people of the state of Texas regarding matters of serious import and as such will need assistance as is guaranteed under the Texas Code of Military Justice for the Office of the Adjutant General. As the Attorney General under the circumstances would be required to appoint an appropriate Adjutant General, it is imperative for the Office of the Attorney General to assure that any potential candidate is both apprised of and free from the corruption already proliferating in the interest of sedition. I require resources commensurate with the task at hand and will be notifying you in the next few days of various investigations ongoing and charges being filed to address these and related issues. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Charity Colleen Krause affirmed via voice at 9.10 a.m. September 6, 2017, with two unidentified men appearing as constables in Houston, Harris County, Texas. September 6, 2017.